morning and welcome to another episode of Hard Factor from the uh, less fly garage. Wes is back and it's Tuesday, not, August 6th. Not much less fly. No, we did the, bring the bug assault out. Well, which you guys were exaggerating if it's not much less fly. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Nice work. <laughs> you left a fucking truly out and you went on vacation. They like truly? Yeah, no, no. Anyway, guys, we've got a big show for you today. Will is on vacation still, but Wes is back, kind of. And uh, we're going to talk about, uh, I'm going to talk about 8chan being down, the darkest place on the internet. And then Mark and Wes are going to take you guys through a news buffet of hot, hot headlines. Whew. Take it away, Pat. Oh, I will. All right, 8chan was shut down yesterday, guys. And that's uh, after its hosting and security company, Cloudflare, said enough is enough and pulled the plug. This, as you might imagine, is in direct relation to the mass shootings over the weekend. Well, I might imagine it, but what's 8chan? Well, we're going to get into that, Mark. Okay. Uh, it's believed that the, uh, the, the penile-challenged El Paso shooter posted his manifesto to the message board site right before he realized his eventual destiny of becoming a bloody semen stain on prison sheets. Yeah, he's just going to be—that's that's him forever. Oh, my just God. Fuck pulp. He's going to be a yeah. little a fuck boy. He's going to be such a little he's ass a, boy. He's going to be a stain. He's just yeah. going to be such a butt boy. Anyway, look, the first two times uh, mass shooters posted nonsensical racist manifestos to Cloudflare servers right before they killed dozens of innocent people, it really got Cloudflare, th Cloudflare thinking. But when it happened a third time, Cloudflare knew they had to do something. Nice work, guys. For those of you guys who don't know, 8chan was an image board, which is essentially a message board that was created by a computer programmer named Frederick Brennan, a.k.a. Hot Wheels who built the site after he observed what he perceived to be rapidly escalating surveillance and a loss of free speech on the internet. Yeah, he mm -hmm. thought the predecessor to 8chan, 4chan, was getting a little bit too prude. So he doubled it, okay. multiplied it by two, setting out to create an internet utopia that he describes as, quote, a free speech friendly alternative with zero oversight whatsoever from moderators of any kind. So that means that nothing gets deleted. Nothing, nothing gets no, no matter how dark, nothing gets taken down by a moderator. Yeah. You can't report people. It's getting too hard to find my child porn. I got to go to a new site. It's yeah. funny you say that, Wes, because what, what happens when you create a safe haven for the subset of humans who spend the majority of their days on computers and can post and conversate completely anonymously with absolutely no oversight? Well, you can take a look at Barstool Sports comment section before the introduction of gold. Oh. You get a rough idea. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But seriously, what you get is a meeting place for the worst of the worst humans. It's like the waiting room outside of a guidance counselor's office at an alternative school. A place <laughs> where child pornography flows freely. A place where QAnon and the deep state are real. A place where you can meet up and plan life-threatening swatting raids on gamers who beat you in Halo. A place where body counts in mass shootings are referred to as high scores. A place where you can publish a manifesto for your brothers to read right before you shoot up a synagogue. That way they can both proofread it, proof it and really feel like they're part of the action. So basically anyone that goes on 8chan should be on some kind of list. Oh, yeah. So basically 8chan was just a bunch of despicable freaks and FBI agents monitoring. A hundred percent. And it also is the place, as I, as I alluded to clearly, that uh, people were posting their manifestos like literally minutes before they were shooting up. Many manifestos. Yeah, three manifestos at least. It's not totally confirmed that the El Paso guy's manifesto, but absolutely the Christchurch manifesto. Right. I hate yeah. when they refer to it as manifestos. It should just be called the ramblings of a piece of shit. Well, that's kind of what manifesto means. Well, I hate it sounds a lot cooler when you call it a manifesto. All right, well, look, on a hard factor, we're no longer referring to these things as manifestos. We're going to refer to them as Wes? Uh, the ramblings of a piece of shit. Perfect. Look, the site's original creator, Hot Wheels, <laughs> who claims he got the idea for the site while tripping on magic mushrooms, has called for it to be taken down in a recent interview, saying, quote, it's not doing the world any good. Now, he hasn't been involved in the site since 2015 when the site was taken over by Jim Watkins, a U.S. retired Army veteran in his 50s who lives in the Philippines where he operates a pig farm in addition to the site. So, oh God. you know, nothing weird is going on at his house. I'm going to drop a few helicopters on that farm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the house you like. You're going to the Philippines, driving around, you make a wrong turn, and you just get assault rifles shot at you because you're on his property. You're at Jim's house. Yeah, yeah his partner in crime. <laughs> drop a few <laughs> ropes into that farm. Oh, yeah, yeah. big time. His son, <laughs> Ronald. Look, anyone that lives in the Philippines, uh, I got it's suspect to me. Any expats in the Philippines are like, what are you doing over there? Ronald and Jim's uh, pig farm? Not, you, not where you want to be. What do you got over there? Yeah, Watkins, he learned computers in the Army before starting uh, the porn site Asian Bikini Bar. Started off well. Yeah, which eventually led him down a dark, <laughs> dark path to where he took over Fortune. Should have stopped there. That's why he went. Yep. yep. So anyway, guys, thank God this yeah. site that uh, is that described itself as, quote, the darkest reaches of the Internet is gone. But this does bring up an important point. 
The original spirit of the site was to allow for people to f speak freely without fear of being censored. And like with exponentially growing technologies, the ability to speak freely without being censored by your government will undoubtedly be a constant battle for all humans to fight. But the unfortunate lesson we've learned that the internet has taught us is that if you let humans say what they want anonymously on the internet, they will undoubtedly abuse it and say the most vile, fucked up shit that's humanly possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pat used to be, I would text Pat back in the day, I was like, what are you doing? He's like, 8 channing. I never fucking <laughs> 8 chan bro. Pat would like, stay in all weekend and 8 chan I never 8 chan <laughs> 8 chan is the people that brought you Pepper the Frog, they're people that brought you like racist memes. Like, Pat just wanted to go, is on the dark web. It's like, do you, you... Pat's like, it's one of my, other, it's one of my things where I make fun of them. I join, the, I join it. And then I read all the stuff, and to, then I make fun of them. To monitor it for that, research. That is yeah. why I'm in Rush Limbaugh's I know. private group on Facebook. <laughs> but no, and Wes, I only go on the dark web at your house. I know. Uh, but 8chan is not the dark web. It was a website. But it was. But it, it takes a lot of the features of the dark web. Yeah, A lot of links from the dark like, web like probably child, in 8chan. Like child pornography. My guess is that a lot of people were on VPNs well on 8chan. A few direct yeah. jumps to the dark web from 8chan. I don't think you understand the dark web, Wes. Uh, I think I, I kind of might a little bit. Explain it. <laughs> okay, so the dark web, you have to go through a, an Onion browser, a special browser, and you need to find special addresses to go. So you can't just, like, Google it. But then, to that same point, Google removed 8chan completely from its google ability because of the child porn. Oh, I oh, feel okay. like the dark web is, like, once you get in, like, it immediately just your computer, like, turns into um, a webcam and it's someone else monitoring you and they're like, mm. get naked to prove you're, you're yeah. worthy. Is that why Wes, every time we come in here, the webcam is turned around in, yeah. the, in the studio? He's trying to get in the dark web. Occasionally. I mean, the dark web's sweet, guys. It's fucking awesome. You can, like, it's like literally a marketplace for any drug that you want. Not that I've ordered any of them on there, but I've, I checked it out. Why don't you give some to Done us? Done a little window shopping. Right. We should maybe test that out one day. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> should, and we are usually doing it via your IP address. Let's take it to the internet, guys. Uh, but uh, honestly, in all seriousness, do you guys think that, uh, before we go to the internet, do you think that you can have anonymity and free speech or or not? Like, like can it exist where you can be anonymous and say what you want? I mean, you... And not create, Yes, of like, course it can exist. It, yep. It's going to exist poorly. You, it can exist. But I think you can have... Free speech is amazing, but if you have free speech and then you're committing crimes, like child pornography is yeah. a crime. Right. right. I like that thought. Like, yeah. There are certain things that free speech still doesn't protect you from from crimes. Yeah, HN did have a line which which they would not cross, and that was a uh, copyrighted material. The D the DMC. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, mm. all right. Let's take it to the internet, guys. So, uh, like, wait a minute. This is a this is a plagiarized manifesto. Yeah, this child porn <laughs> yeah. is copyrighted. Copy, right. copy and pasted from the last mash. I don't think you have. I don't think you have the right to post this this child porn. Um, we we tried to get a comment from HN, but no luck. Uh, this comment is from Matthew Prince. Cloudflare's chief chief executive. And, and what is Cloud? Cloudflare was the security company and also like web infrastructure company that HM was using. They right. stopped so when, them when from cloud, cyber attacks. When cloud, right. So when Cloudflare went down, they're just basically uh, they're fucked. They're just open for attack. But mm. check this out: Cloudflare is based in San Francisco. It's not like a fucking foreign company. Like they were allowing right. this shit to happen. There are other companies like Cloudflare as well that that HN could eventually use. Well, and HN get back jumped up. to a different server and then right. then that's gone now. Yeah. Anyway, this is from uh, Cloudflare's chief executive Matthew Prince, who said, "Quote: We've seen a pattern where this lawless community has demonstrated its ability to create real harm and real damage. If we see a bad thing in the world and we can get help to get in front of it, we have an obligation to do that. It only took you six fucking years, Matthew. It took yeah. you six fucking years and." Three mass shootings. So yeah. much you go to this fucking guy's house and just punch him in the goddamn face. Because you know he's living in a house off profits that he made off fucking HN. Yeah, so from all reports from Pat, HN's been bad since day one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Any 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 dark reaches of the internet where people can say whatever the fuck they want and they can post under a pseudonym, it's going to be bad. He missed that one. I was suggesting that you were on it from day one. I was not on <laughs> HN. You know that. <laughs> all right. The dark web, however. All right, take it away, Mark. Oh, no, Wes is going to Oh, I'm yeah. shit. I'm sorry. Here we go. The news buffet. So uh, the Dow dipped 767 points yesterday as investors sold off shares. Uh, they're worried about the continuing trade war we're having with China. What exactly Trump is going to do next? Um, that's the biggest loss for stocks this year. It's like a six-day loss that's going on. Uh, China also uh, let the yuan, uh, I think I'm saying that right, drop uh, to its lowest level against the dollar in over a decade. Trump has called this move currency manipulation. And in response to President Trump's tweets last week about uh, threatening to put tariffs on pretty much all of China's uh, goods, about $300 billion worth. Which is 
is that. everything in your pocket. Yeah, yeah, if you if you threaten and actually go through with like a three hundred billion dollar tariff, maybe there would be a reaction. Yeah, there's going to be a reaction. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it's not, why are you acting so surprised? So in response to that, uh, China stopped buying U.S. farm products and devalued devalued its currency. So like I said, it's a six day losing streak. It was apparently set off by the Federal Reserve's reluctance to commit to long term interest rate drops. Something that investors and and you know economists saw as a signal that this trade war might not work out in the U.S.'s favor in the short term. Why are we shipping? Uh, Farm products to China anyway, man. They, they, they're the fucking biggest country in the world outside of Russia. Can't they, can't they, uh, or maybe they're bigger than Russia. Can't they just fucking farm their own shit? I mean, I guess. We can do a lot of the shit that we get from them, too. But, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. I'm so, not eating any Chinese you know produce. Trade, you know how trade works? I don't. <laughs> yeah. You know that. Yeah. Why'd you ask me that? So, so even though the economy is doing great, unemployment rates are great, there are still signals that I certainly can't begin to make sense of, like uh, treasury notes, yields dropping, et cetera, that um, economists are pointing to. That this whole China thing actually might come back to bite Trump in the ass. There's also some speculation that Trump may try to devalue the dollar, which would, of course, impact buying power for businesses. So hopefully this guy knows what the fuck he's doing. You think that he's going to just he's going to get in, enraged in a battle and he's going to devalue the dollar just so he could win? I mean, he, he could. Fly off the handle. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't doubt it. We'll see. We'll see. So the mass shootings and the fallout from them is still dominating the news cycle, and I'll just call out a few of the highlights since yesterday's show. Awesome. President Trump gave a speech on Monday morning where he condemned white supremacy and racist bigotry and said hate has no place in America, which was nice to hear from him. Yeah, indeed. He did seem to back off his earlier morning tweets on Monday where he tweeted maybe a married or linked bill could be passed with gun reform in the form of background checks and an immigration reform bill that we can add to that bill. I'm not sure how the two are linked or why he would ever even fucking say that. Uh, He didn't mention that insanely shady bill in the speech, uh, but he did blame gun violence on mental health, saying mental illness and hatred pulls the trigger, not the guns. So maybe uh, some gun lobbyists place the call in. In between some tweets, yeah. So essentially, he was trying to package his uh, yes. yes, his wall. It's like piggybacking the wall. With, yeah, yeah. You get this, and I get this. Uh, Trump is planning to visit El Paso and Dayton, which he called Toledo in a sign off of his speech this Wednesday. Which you've ever been to Toledo is a major insult. <laughs> and Cory <laughs> and Cory Booker, Nancy Pelosi, Tim Ryan, and Beto O'Rourke, amongst other Democrats, are losing their goddamn minds over this whole ordeal and Trump's each and every response to the point where Beto was dropping f bombs. When asked by a journalist if there was anything Trump could do to protect us from gun violence, Beto said, you know the shit he's been saying. He's been calling Mexicans immigrants, rapists, and criminals. I don't know, like, members of the press, what the fuck? Mm. Hold on a second. (laughs) You know, I, it's these, it's these questions that you already know the answers to. So he's just lost. He's a mad guy. He's very passionate right now. It's tough. It's his district that got shut up. It's fucking tough. Beto's like immediately asking people what he's polling at after his speeches in El Paso. They're like, still 2%. He's like, fuck. Yeah, he's walking Uh, a dangerous line there. Pelosi could not be found for comment as she was screaming into her half-filled wine glass all day long. (laughs) Uh, All right, so R. Kelly has officially been charged in Minnesota, adding to the list of charges he's now facing. So he's got one charge of prostitution, one charge of solicitation after he allegedly solicited a 17-year-old girl to come back to his hotel room with him after one of his concerts and do a little dance for him for 200 bucks uh, naked. He kind of solicited all 17-year-old girls when he put out that song, Remix to Ignition. After the party, it's the after party, and, and after, after the party, it's the hotel, hotel lobby. Hotel lobby, right, yeah. yes. He's staying true to his words. So how it went down uh, was back in July of 2001, the young girl approached R. Kelly outside the venue to ask for his autograph, which he gave her along with some digits, his phone number. Um, so the girl called R. Kelly, who then got her up to his hotel room, helped take her clothes off, took <sighs> off his own clothes to make her feel more comfortable. Well, yeah, he's, and, he, yeah. he's a, he's a I'm not going to... Gonna do, I'm not gonna ask you to do something I wouldn't do myself, right. guy. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, he, like, and if then you're gonna get naked, I might as yeah. well. And then he, yeah, then he watched her dance naked. Um, let's both stick fingers up our asses. Yeah, <laughs> would you? You wouldn't feel so weird if I put my yeah. finger up my butt, would you? <laughs> let's do a little follow the leader. Simon oh, says, What if I just jumped up, up and yeah. down a little bit with that finger in my butt? Is what that weird? We, for what you? if we fuck each other? Um, <laughs> Apparently he then but gave we're her fucking some each other. <laughs> Apparently he then gave her some free tickets to his 18 and over concert and talked as with a him. test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and told her to no, don't worry about it. Yeah, and, uh, did did she get in? Did did she get in? Well, I gave her those tickets because <laughs> I thought she was 18. Um, She's in. Yeah. And uh, so there were then talks of him flying her to Chicago, um, you know, where a lot of his uh, charges are currently in Illinois and um, were in the works. But despite the girl's efforts to call the singer on the same number, uh, she called the first time she could not get in touch with the singer. Whoa. Yeah. So hold on. Hold on. Pro tip for R. Uh, if you're gonna be sexually assaulting minors, uh, you gotta you gotta pick up the phone, buddy. Yeah, give them the time of day afterwards, otherwise they're gonna get pissed. You don't want to mm. ghost them. Not not this guy's a fucking monster, but he's also yeah. an idiot. It's a good good point. 
Good yeah. point, Pat. Uh, so he's now facing even more charges than he already has going on in Illinois and federally, and he is just fucked. Yeah, he is. All right, everyone's fourth favorite member of the Jackass Squad, an original founding member of CKY, Bam Margera, is losing it worse than ever before. Hold on, hold on. He's my first favorite member, easily. He's your first favorite? I'm, I was exaggerating. I was just being nice to him. No, he started CKY. Okay. He, yeah, he, but, he's the catalyst. So CKY sucks. And then out of CKY Jack- does not fucking out of, suck. Out of, Jackass, it's entertaining. out of Jackass, Johnny Knoxville's better. Wee Man's better. Knoxville's better. Chris Pontius is better. Um, Brian Dunn was better. Rap, Brian Dunn was not better. Rab himself might be better. No, the, Rab- the long curly haired guy. Oh, fuck you. Rab himself was from CKY and he couldn't do tricks. Bam, so he'd do skits. Bam Margera was, was a loser. <laughs> Bam shared a series of Instagram videos this weekend begging Dr. Phil for help. Uh, he said he's worse than he's ever been before and that his family's in shambles. So Dr. Phil being the man of the people, took him up on uh, his offer for help. And on Monday, he filmed a three-hour one-on-one interview with Dr. Phil um, and Bam just in the green room with no studio audience. Uh, mm-hmm. The interview should be coming out on Dr. Phil's next season, so I think he did it for profit. Did, uh, well, I also – it was – a lot of people were debating whether or not he was trolling because, like, he was just like, I need Dr. Phil's help. And it kind of didn't make sense because mm. Brandon Novak, his buddy from growing up, is a rehab interventionist. And Novak tried to come in, and he was like, Novak's trying to get fucking paid from the rehab facility. But he wanted Dr. Phil. I don't know. A lot of bad blood between Novak and uh, Not Bama. good. He was writing in fucking codes. Nobody saying, knows what the fuck is Help going on with me. that guy. Bam apparently is now on the way to rehab after that interview for the fourth time in his life. Earlier this year, he was in rehab for about a week before he wrote an eight-page handwritten crazy letter checking himself out. And it, he explained he's going to be able to handle his demons on his own. Sounds like a manifesto. Yeah, he yeah, said it's he, easier he to read a manifesto the- for sure. Well, hold, we don't <laughs> use that word on, on Hard Factor. What is it called, Wes? The ramblings of a piece of shit. <laughs> Which it was. He was also recently kicked off a Southwest Airlines flight for being belligerent and fighting with the Southwest Airlines employee. But Bam did show off some nifty remote piloting skills when he almost flew a dildo mounted to a drone into his girlfriend's vagina this time last year. So if all else fails, he could probably get some drone work in the future. It was his wife, Mark. And also, I don't know if you guys saw the video of him leaving Austin, Texas yesterday, but he threw seventeen thousand dollars into a uh, into an airport security bin and was like, uh, "I don't, I don't have time to count it. Uh, can yeah. I get this through security?" You're a big Bam guy. Huh? I'm a huge Bam guy. I didn't know he was in fucking Austin. I would have yeah. gone to see him, give him a hug. I did. I'll admit, I did used to watch a show. I liked when he fucked with his parents. Um, all right. So moving on. If you are scared of being attacked by a shark, you might want to listen up because I'm about to tell you the last place you should go. That's because over the last 24 hours, three people have been bitten by sharks at New Smyrna Beach in Florida. Um, the place that experts have deemed the, uh, the, uh, the shark attack capital of the world. Oh. And uh, tourist officials and beachside businesses in New Smyrna are now all just slowly walking into the ocean. Um, P- people are all like, no, it's the safest place now because a shark just attacked here. Come on. Ah! Uh, yeah, jet ski tours are going down Getting in fucking price. bit. Yeah. Lightning doesn't strike twice. Oh, my God. Yeah, so in fact, Florida is pretty much the last place you want to go, period, if you're scared of a shark attack, as um, 828 of the 14, over 1,400 confirmed shark attacks that have uh, taken place in the U.S. since 18. 37 have taken place there oh wow um, i like oh, how you wow. went that far back that's the one they started t- t- taking records like 60 percent so yeah, like, lots like, like, can sharks just smell meth like uh yeah. bears can smell period blood <laughs> oh, they're, dude. they're attracted of guys yelling shut up bitch from the <laughs> water <laughs> yeah <laughs> so hawaii i'm teaching him to swim yeah. shut up um I'm so doing, she I'm, never <laughs> shuts up shark <laughs> yeah. i'm doing backflips off the pier um <laughs> So Hawaii, I'm going to come back tomorrow and do more backflips. You can't stop me. Yeah. Uh, so Hawaii was second with 162. So big lead for Florida. Um, I guess that makes sense with all the touristy beaches down there, surfing, more people in the water. I guess it's a numbers thing, but there's just a lot of shark attacks. So oh, those are um, easy to pick off. Yeah, just yeah. a bunch of drunk people taunting <laughs> yeah. sharks, yeah, splashing around. <laughs> Look at this one. <laughs> Falling. Um, Betty won't bite me. Uh, none of the recent attacks were life threatening, luckily, as they were all small, smaller sharks like black tips and sandbar sharks. Uh, but occasionally tiger sharks do come in the area, and those just uh, don't exactly just nip you when they bite you. T West, do you have a uh, do you have a shark fear? Are you f- are you afraid of no, sharks? No, I've been scuba. I mean, I've been um, snorkeling. I don't. Know, I get in the ocean whenever. I'm actually more scared of jellyfish. Yeah, than not any more than normal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, <laughs> yeah. a slight fear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and lastly, a man was arrested in Union County, North Carolina, after detectives raided his home after a four month heroin distribution investigation. Forty hmm. seven year old Marty Shane Cranford had seventy grams of heroin. <laughs> And seven grams of meth seized from his house. But that's not all detectives seized from his house, as they had to call in a 32-foot trailer to seize everything else they found. Any guesses mm. as to what that was? Ooh, I don't know. A Corvette? Mm. Stolen cars? What was it? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, well, apparently Cranford burglarized approximately $100,000 in stolen goods from a house burglar off a of Griffith Road home earlier in 2019. The hall included a knight's armor suit, what? antique paintings, 
statues, a lamp, a surround sound system, marble top bathroom vanity, and a porcelain bathtub. So not exactly a dash and grab. Couldn't believe his eyes. A knight suit of armor is a fucking home run for a meth head. You better believe that he, his wife was like, get out of that suit of armor! And he was like, no, he's probably in that shit for weeks. Well, how, lo- like, how long... He- did it take to steal all that? Did he know they were out of town and he rented his own Johan? He just you, dude, stole the whole week. Or did you he, don't accidentally steal a suit of armor? You think yeah. maybe he was like making a drug deal and he uh, to this guy and he knew he had a knight's armor suit, so he just like stayed in the knight's armor and waited for him to go out of town. Just like <laughs> he's in his house, yeah, in the knight's just armor. Classic it. gag. Yeah. His eyes. <laughs> and that's gonna do it for hard factor. Hope everyone is having a good week so far. Lots of big things coming up for Hard Factor in a little less than a month. We have a live beer power hour in Austin, Texas, at the East Side Tavern on Wednesday, September fourth. PFT commenter will be joining us, and it's going to be a fucking wild time to kick off an insane long weekend in Austin, culminating the UT LSU football game. You're going to want to come to join us on Wednesday night if you're in South Texas, and if not, be sure to watch the live stream. Then the following week, we'll be live in Houston for the third Democratic debates, and we'll be causing a shitstorm there, covering the debates, uh, interviewing a bunch of people, causing a scene, and then throwing a big party Friday night at a bar to be announced in the coming weeks. Which is dope, but by the way, I have a lot of money on Predicted that we're going to lose six to nine candidates before the September debates, which means there will nice. be two nights. That's just my mm. opinion. Well, that's a good segue because uh, make sure you sign up for Predicted, the stock market for gambling, using our promo code URL, uh, URL of predictit.org slash promo slash hard factor 20 this week, if you haven't already, as they're offering a free $20 for your first deposit all the way through the end of August. What's that one more time? Um, predictit.org slash promo slash hard factor 20. Now they're also taking our lines on Predictit. Like, for example, we asked them to put up a will ASAP Rocky appear at the White House by invitation prior to September 15th, and they're going to this week. And if you DM us or tweet us lines like that at hard factor news and at Predictit, um, we will send them across or they'll read them. And, and if they accept them, they'll credit your account. So follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Hard Factor News. Spread the word that Hard Factor is fucking everything in sight. And most importantly, have a great fucking day.